the, me. It says for... start the show, but I don't know what. We learn how to do a dang show for once. Whoa. Look at that. Welcome to Le Clickbait Sport. Scooter has shown up. He's graced us with our present. Did you, now, Scooter, did your dad talk to you? Listen. Listen. First and foremost, that was my actual father. A. That's A. That's what you need to know. Secondly, I have been scolded. By my father, he said, listen, Cameron, I'm getting calls from random white dudes telling me you need to finish your book report. Very white. Yes. Here we go, baby. Translucent, baby. Here we go. We're out here. Casper. We're here. We got the book report locked and loaded. Nailed it. We're nice. ready. Thanks to Papa Magruder and teacher Tom Grassi for really, you know, the support. And the foundation. I appreciate it. Wow. Yes, the foundation. So we're going to get to that after our first break. But the lead story, the title of the show, this Sunday, apparently, in Yes. The circus. What's that? It's the circus. Yeah. They're bringing back Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. Apparently, they're, they're very mad that Trent Baalke has stayed on to be the GM of the team. So they're coming out wearing clown masks. In the uh, image of Shad Khan with the little mustache thingy there. Shad Clown. They call him yeah, Shad, Shad Clown. Clown. Um, Shad Clown? You know, I, I think we all understand what the purpose of this is, but I just want to ask, can y'all ever remember something a team or a fan base has done that actually affected change, that got the owner to recognize that their fans were angry and that they had to do something different? Or is this just basic posturing? Because for me, I can remember the Baltimore Orioles fans staged a walkout where they left in the fourth inning, and that was like 10 years ago, and the Orioles are still trash. <laughs> I can remember the Pirates did that, I think, in 2007 or 2008. The problem is the Pirates, I think, went out to like a 7-1 to lead, and nobody actually participated in the walkout. So it ended up back. <laughs> that's, that's such a pirate thing. Wait a minute. We, get, we can't waste a win here. Yeah, it's like, wait, no, I think there were like five people that walked out. Brandon, can you think of an example of fans actually affecting change? Man, this is no. like an on the spot there's no such, question. Yeah, there's no such thing as change. It's an illusion. Nothing will ever change. The closest thing, like the first thing that popped into my mind about like fans unifying was probably Patriots fans against Roger Goodell when <laughs> – he went mm. after Tom Brady, and you had the – it's also the clown. So that's the, the tie to the Jags, the clown notes, the Goodell clown shirts. Mm -hmm. I feel like when Brady was suspended, Patriots fans against Roger Goodell was one of the most like you – and I think most NFL fans, even though we like kind of happy Brady was suspended a little bit, I think most of us were like, we did why all are you going so hard on some I air pressure? Got a hundo. Oh, geez. Please don't tell me this is for me. No, no. no. Clubby with a oh, hundo. Clubby. Let's go. Clubby with a hundo. It's not me. Thank God. It's me. I did want to say there is one thing where fan like revolt has inspired change, and I just jogged my memory on this. The European Super League. Remember back, I think, March, April, or May of last year, there were a bunch of like teams from Premier League, uh, not Bundesliga, La Liga in uh, Italy, I think uh, a couple of Italian leagues as well. They were going to form one big like Americanized league where they didn't have to relegate. The fan bases rioted, and after two days, they called off the whole thing. And they made the Glazers sell, I think, Man U. I think like Juventus stock and Manchester United stock dropped by over 50%. Scooter's getting hundos dropped on him. Yeah. Oh good. my God. Dustin Shores. Uh, listen, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's glad to be back. But five, to your point, to answer your question, yes, there is a fan base I can think of that comes together when things are bad. And things seem to always be bad. And that franchise is the Philadelphia Eagles. They came together and booed Santa Claus in solidarity. <laughs> I'm not sure what that did, 
But I do know they boo their coaches and their players often, and the turnover is ridiculous. Well, yeah, they have right. to consider the context of that whole situation, too. Philly was terrible that year, and the number one pick was O.J. Simpson. And unfortunately, <laughs> they screw up their whole tank by winning that final week. So Philly's absolutely pissed because they're not going to get like a potentially generational running back in OJ Simpson. This was before the bloody glove. This was before, when he was really good. He was just Orenthal. Damn it, we could have had a murder on guy. our team. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, instead like Santa Claus is out here driving drunk in a white Ford Bronco. He's like an 18 year old kid. And everyone's just like booing him. Cause he's just like, he's a really uh, crappy Santa Claus. It's not good. It's uh, it's bad. Oh God, another. Hundo. Yeah, they really cut and, and that's why I think good deal Santa there. Claus. Hundo. I'll I'll also say this: Philly fans also unite against cranial safety by throwing batteries at people. All right. Uh, speaking of throwing batteries at people, where is the best website to bet on sports this weekend? Very you want to hear about transition. electrifying? Well, <laughs> very interesting. Can I get transition. the yes? Thank you very much. DraftKings.com. Uh, they're matching if you use the code clickbait, which is covered up right now. Thank Look you. And for, bait. I get what you guys are doing, but we need to show the code, please. Show. I'm sorry, there's okay, the code clickbait. They will match your first time deposit bonus up to one thousand dollars. I am been getting into same game parlays Arg. lately. That's the way to go. Like, because all you got to do is like bet five dollars and you bet the spread and the over that turns into twenty dollars. It's a four hmm. times multiply, no, it's no. easy math. Especially if you feel like a team is going to score a lot of points on their way to kicking the crap out of the Houston Texans. Anyways, this is you're running out of weekends in the NFL. There's this weekend regular season and then the playoffs. Those easy games that are that are easy to spot on DraftKings.com aren't going to be there. So use code clickbait sports when you sign up today. DraftKings.com, the best place. New York is yeah. getting sports betting on Saturday. Man, use yeah. the code clickbait. Now Use the code. War going hey. on. Whoa! There you go. Also, <sighs> Speaking of the relax. book, relax. Let's go. Relax on the book report. Calm down. Isn't my presence enough, guys? Y'all no, need a book report too. Nope. You lost to the Cardinals because your coach doesn't know how to use time. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Okay. Cowboys yeah. Lost. Can we get a book Cowboys report lost. on time management? That's please be next. Please. I just want, did this happen I was in, challenge the play. Did this I'm happen in Green out. Bay, Tom? Was this a thing? Oh, buddy. Occurring? All day, every day. He's All right. day, Gosh. every day. How do you not get this sorted? It's one of the easiest things to do. Time management. But, but it's okay. Take he time out. Analytics. Don't he take a time out. Analytics. You can look and you will find me. This is what, what you get when you're a big time veteran coach. There you go, five. Thank you, five. Thank you, you, dude. When Mike McCarthy's done with you, you're going to be begging for the clapper. Yeah, Jason Somehow, Garrett, part two. They say there's no I such thing as great second act ever going to no, happen. Actually, boy, wait, you're even better. Mike the Cowboys McCarthy are getting has not much better than Jason Garrett ever has year one. Okay, I'll take a lost game because you don't know how to call timeouts, but at least we have some hope. Okay, you we're not eight and eight. We're not eight and nine. Okay. Year one. This man is well, coming. Your team's not going to the Super Bowl, unlike certain stellar teams. Oh, Deco. Okay. Super Bowl. Oh, Deco. Okay. Okay. Tom, why don't you set up Steelers this? Steelers are going to win, and the Steelers are going to the Super Bowl. Talking about the book report? Yes. Tom, set up the book report. Wow. Someone just got oh, $200. No, damn. Oh, that oh that's Super me. No. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. Oh, welcome. Yeah. I was worried that was me for a second. Thank you. All right, we want the book report. You know okay. what? If we're gonna get the book report, right. then let's put Scooter. Uh, let's put Mr. Scoots up on blast right here. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Here, here's what we're doing, guys. Urban Meyer above the line. Let me just read the back for you guys so you get a basic understanding of what's going on here. If you spent a season with us at Ohio State, you would hear me constantly talk about above the line behavior. That's because I know that if we all embrace it, coaches and players alike, we will be a team that has an uncommon commitment to one another and to the hard work necessary to achieve our mission. <clears throat> we will be a team that pushes relentlessly to train and perform at the highest level. And it starts with leadership. 
If you want the people on your team to perform above the line, you must lead above the line. Mm. Wow. 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 Um, Scooter, just a quick question. Wow. So you have multiple weeks to do this, but you couldn't even memorize the back cover? Yeah, that's that was a no-go for me. I will like to say the good thing about this book, even though it is written on about a fifth grade reading level, you have pictures to accompany. Okay? You got pictures. So realistically, this is about a how many pages was this is about a 250 page picture book. And I encourage each and every one of you out there, if you're struggling with how to lead on your leadership styles, pick one of these up. I'm pretty sure Very you'll good. be able to get one of these on sale anywhere. Like they, I, I might give this to one of you guys just so that we can keep this tradition going. But that's why we're having you do the book report. So we don't have to read it. A line. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. So, do we have the first slide on screen? Is Mr. Teacher Grassi prepared, ready, the rubric? Oh, I, I've been prepared for weeks. Rupert. Okay. Well, that makes one of us. Yeah, so we need, the, uh, we need the PowerPoint here, Director Brandon. Yeah. Some, Is some there a way to make that big? I think the pot, top. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ooh, kinky, it disconnected. Kinky. Now it's connected again. Okay. We good. Okay. okay Welcome. Scooter, whenever you are ready. Okay, welcome one and all. Everyone just shuffle in and uh, prepare yourself. Questions at the end chat. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> Above the Line by Urban Meyer. Uh, it, actually, I think it was written by Wayne Coffey. 90% was probably written by Wayne Coffey, and <laughs> Urban just told him the other 10%. Speaking of coffee, bench warmer brew, armchair quarterback. Uh, by the way, Scooter, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. Um, you know, everyone here can read. So let's make sure that when we're presenting, we're not just reading off the slide, okay? Okay. Yes. Well, I will 100% be reading off the slide. That's about all I'm going to be doing. Did, uh, did you have any? Did you have any fantastic wait. effects and cheesy sound effects to go with this? No, you really no animations. No animations. No okay. Uh, you have to really I'm, bare bones. Hold on. I'm writing uh, PS10 for no can animations. Can you, I'm yeah. a visual learner. Can you please yeah. make a full screen? Thank you. Yes. Can we? Yeah. Can we go to the presentation mode on the slideshow? Is there okay. a way to do that? There is. If you just go to slideshow, you, you could do view. You can go to view, right there. View. View. Uh -huh. Yep. That's one. Uh -huh. Yep. And then there it is. There it is. Oh, baby. Baby. Welcome. There everyone we go to the first book report ever on clickbait sports, and hopefully the last one. The no. book is called Above the Line. It is by Urban Meyer. But it is more than football. <laughs> this whole book is about more than football. It's about the cold, hard facts of life, chat. Okay. In this book, Urban Meyer painstakingly details the lessons he's learned over his career and describes what it takes to be a winner in all aspects of life. Moreover, Meyer details which leadership styles work and when to employ differing tactics. The book is the antithesis of his current alleged conduct. It's also garbage. Do not read this <laughs> at all. Wow. He's basically, also critical. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, he's, he's if you break it good. down, he's, he's this book happy. is really a collection of stories, really, uh, from his time coaching. He provides a decent outline of how to be a successful coach and leader. He details how to live life, quote unquote, above the line, on and off the field, to become a relentless leader and performer. Oh, he's very relentless, all right. Just not so either. he's relentless. He takes you through Absolutely. his time when he's at Florida. Go Gators! You already know three national championships. Let's go. He takes you through his time at Ohio State, winning those national championships before he was fired from Jacksonville in the middle of his first coaching season. Some say he might be the worst coach ever, but that was before Ooh. this book came out. Uh, Tom, will you uh, will you be Dustin Shores' teacher? Always, Dustin. Always. Dustin. I'm unfortunately Scooter's teacher right now. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so if we could just go to the next slide, please. There we go. Ooh, now, be pictures. Right, this looks fancy. If you get to the end of this book, 
what you will come to find is that you wasted a lot of time. That's A. Like, you could have done so <laughs> many other things, but you chose to read this book. Essentially, what it comes down to is culture. This is one aspect of the book. Be intentional about your culture. Okay, we're seeing something right now. The Bucks, they chose to bring in Antonio Brown. Was that a right fit for their culture? We'll discuss later. But that's something that is discussed in this book right here. You got to know your culture. Above the line is a philosophy for life, not just football. So everything that you read in this book, you can relate to your personal life, including football, including other sports as well. That's a good question. Address your failures. They are catalysts for improvement. So basically, in this book, he gives a couple of exam examples of players failing and him having to talk to them about doing certain things, not doing certain things. And he said, the longer you wait to address these, the bigger the problem is. So you want to nip everything in the bud, which is what Jacksonville did. Was one of those players Aaron Hernandez? Questions at the end, please. please okay, all sorry. questions sorry. at sorry. the end. Very well. I'll run right towards there. problems. This leads into the next, next in the bug. You want to run towards your problems. Okay. Once you realize there is a problem, run towards it. You've identified what it is. You've given now solve it. Which actually, I like that one. That is actually one of the points I did like because it's like once you know there's a problem, solve it, and then set the standard. Okay. At the University of Florida, we have a standard, the Gator standard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Florida, the standard worked. I'm not sure where some things changed, where the line the line might have shifted is what maybe have happened. Yeah, it might have got lower. might have gone back under the line. Mm -hmm. Well, that is essentially the main points. And then lastly, <laughs> lastly, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting close. We're getting close. But uh, in most books, right, there's conflict. There's an antagonist, a protagonist. They go through a journey, and at the end of the journey, there's some result. This book was not really like that. There was no main antagonist. There was no main protagonist. It's just him talking about his past life. So as far as conflict goes, the conflicts is relegated basically to the football teams he was playing and the losses that he took. Right. In right. the book, though, not really that much conflict. In life, though, a lot of conflict. <laughs> and remember, if we go back to his previous points, once you identify a problem, run towards your problems, the solution being, in this case, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, firing Urban Meyer. And ladies and gentlemen, oh my gosh, this is what I learned. Yeah. If you just heard the last like 30 seconds of what I just said, you do not need to read this book. It is literally all a long story with pictures. <laughs> Does it show you how to adjust your camera focus? Is that in yeah. the book as well? That is in the manual. I need to read the manual. Yeah. Dude, this your book text. report was about as out of focus as your camera is right now. <laughs> your fingers. You need that, to just that, focus. You, you need to white balance. You need to. We're done. No, and no, you need to bring your face up to it. Like, bring your whole face in. Yep, yep. That's how it there is. There you go. Bring the face in. Now there back it out. Back it out. Oh, look at that oh, face. There we go. Look at the pores. There you go. There you go. Nice now just stay there the whole time. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Some I think you need to back up, maybe. Okay. He's or just not. Out. Actually. Okay. Bruh. Bruh. Is that okay. the, are, have we Who reached the so? end? Is that the last slide? Yeah, uh, this is yeah, the, uh, the that is the, how we're all feeling right now. That was uh, one star uh, review. Wow. I'm sorry. What did you learn about the book? Yeah. How did this affect you personally? I want to know. What I learned is that no one else needs to read this book ever. That's what I learned. Um, <laughs> how did it affect me personally? I don't have that time that I could have done literally anything. Uh, editing a video, talking about sports on clickbait. All of that's gone because we had to do this book report. Chat, this is what your money buys. I'm sad. Hey, we appreciate it. Would you rather buy a share of the Green Bay Packers? Does, Honestly, does anyone have any questions? Because, yes. like, 
I do. A yes. uh, quick question. Uh, this is from Bruce Allen of the Washington Reskins. Is the culture actually damn good? Which culture? The, no, just the culture. The, the culture. culture. Yeah. The culture. The culture. Is the culture uh, damn good? Does I just want to know in the book, does yes. he address does he address Tim Tebow crying? Not Tim after crying, they but actually there is a picture his of last Tim year. Tebow. He actually describes Tim Tebow as a uh, evil man, <laughs> not as evil. I want not, you guys to really look at the picture. The favorite son this, is that like, this is actually like they have a lot of pictures in here. Let me get the glare off. Look at this man. This is the worst. All right. If there are the no more questions, I think we, it's time for Tom to grade this I, project. I, I think we all need to grade this. So, uh, okay. Perna, if you don't mind just putting up the rubric, please. Um, can, can you see up? Get the rubric, please. Let me get a moment here. Um, Scooter, um, just a couple of bullet points here. Um, <clears throat> so, I, I just took a few notes. Um, there were very few bullet points. Um, it, it seemed that the structure of the presentation wasn't the greatest, um, in which it looks like there was either blocks of text or there were such few, there's so few words on the slides uh, that bullets wouldn't even have been warranted. Um, uh, there, I was expecting you to read off the slides the entire time. And while that definitely did happen, um, you did improvise a little bit, you know, demonstrating your knowledge. So that was actually a plus there. Had some nice enthusiasm. Um, your summary, which basically should have been your thesis, I thought was very general, uh, wasn't really, you know, specific at all. And while it is supposed to be a summary, if I was to read that, I don't think I would understand or get a good understanding of what the book was about. Um, the slides themselves were very short. A uh, few descriptions were given. There really wasn't a lot of analysis um, on any of the slides. You did a little bit with the quotes page. I would say that was definitely your best slide. Because um, you know you were able to elaborate that on a little bit. Uh, there was no work cited page, um, and I also have a note here that your camera was not focused, similar to the report you gave. <laughs> so with that, um, I think we can go and start uh, grading this here, folks. So we can look at the first box here and look at claims. Chat. Let me know what your letter grade is right now in the comments. Let me know. Stop lying. Okay. So we can start with claim here. Ow. So on a one Ow. through four scale, we can Ow. take a look here. Um, maybe, Pern, if we could zoom in a tiny bit just to make that a little bit bigger. Um, <laughs> just a smidge. Just, uh, that, I think that'd be great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so with four points, meaning that it got full credit, it would have a central thesis. Uh, it was clearly, oh God, it was clearly stated uh, as well as, oh, this is for four points, the four points. Oh, uh, clearly stated what about five points? Come on. You, you had a perfect chance to make it real clickbaity with the bald man up there, and you don't even do that with a room. Sorry, come on. And demonstrate strong understanding and complexity. Um, do we? Does anyone give Scooter a four here? Uh, I'm going to say no. no there I was a that. more over comma. Are you? How much more complex does it need to get? I mean, it, it was 250 pages, so I imagine there is at least more over comma. I mean, I mean, your critique of his leadership was that you shouldn't read this book. Yes. That's not a critique of the, the Tom, that's a critique of the book. Tom, right? to be fair to Scooter, you're giving Urban Meyer a lot of credit. Yeah. A no, lot. No, listen, I, I could do a report on green eggs and ham, you know, and that and that's a child's book. Okay. Yeah, but Dr. Seuss what? was a genius. I he think probably would have led the Jack for wins. Yeah. Dr. Um, Seuss. I think we know what So Tom, what what do we uh, do we have a consensus we'll on how many points for this first uh section? Do we I'd say two. Two, two points. Two points. Two points. Okay. So two, two points. points. Two points for claim. All right, if we could go down to the uh, the next part here, uh, that is going to be your evidence. Now, here I think we're going to have some problems here. Uh, for number a four point response would be provides thorough uh, support, facts, details, examples, and sources. Uh, description includes depth, <laughs> uh, as well as effective and clear contextual understanding of Urban Meyer's leadership. Um, this one, if I had to be completely honest, this is going around a one. This one, this, they really did good. show a picture of Urban in the bar with the co-ed, though. So that to me was funny. I, I feel like that's at least a two three. for the picture. I'll at give at least a three because I like pictures. Okay. Exactly. Um, it made it relevant. I'd say one and a half, maybe a two. Give okay. A two. So we have a two. We have a three. Uh, Perna, what would you give us? Two. Okay. So we go to two. Okay. So we go to two points there. Okay. We can go two points here. Jeez, okay. Tom, you're a communist. 
Uh, just moving down to analysis here. Um, so this is substantial depth and relevance, explaining the meaning and significance and uh, of or and or the relationship between Meyer and leadership. Uh, and then some strong support, uh, connecting it back to your overall thesis, which I mentioned before was pretty general. Um, so this one, yeah, I, I'd say at best we're going we're to look at a two. Uh, I'm going to go with the two as well. Yeah, and then unfortunately, I'm gonna, putting I'm gonna Tebow up there is not going to help you. I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah, okay. So Perna goes with two, and then the okay, yeah, since there was zero um, pictures of Tim Tebow shirtless, that's a huge doc Makes in sense. my book. I was just hoping one shirtless Tebow might have gotten Scooter all fours. Honestly, yeah. uh, just one shirtless Tebow might have gotten you on all fours. I knew Damn. I should have added it. I was all contemplating, five. yeah, but then, I was thinking then, like monetization purposes. Finally, I here. can send you a uh, whole uh, archive if you need it. Okay. Next time. Uh, Next we time. could do uh, JJ writing. Watt. So writing um, is, you know, I, I think that there wasn't a lot that was actually written uh, out of the structure. I didn't think there was too many grammatical errors. So that's that's a positive. Very I would actually good. Say maybe, yeah, his, so, his punctuation was good. I'd say like, maybe go to three there. here. I say we go to about three here. All right. I'll, I'll take a three. I'll take a three. That's a win for that's a win for Scooter. Okay, so any of us, that's let's take a, a look here. So it's an average. You had nine total points here. And if you actually scroll down a little bit, Perna, there is a rubric that's beneath that's that for question. a scoring grade. Um, well, so you got nine points here. Uh, so basically averaging <laughs> this entire thing out. Uh, so you had three twos as well as a three. So you basically averaged between a 64% and a 68%. Hey, you passed. That I'll take theoretically. That. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'll take that. He passed, but wasn't there a penalty for lateness? Yes, there was a penalty yes. for lateness. So because the uh, uh, the lateness, so that's going to detract at least a full point here, which means that you'll be at a solid two. I'll take that off for the writing for the three you gave, meaning you got a 64, you did not pass, and you need to buy Packer stock now. <laughs> he Whoa. got the D. So. Um, and that is a fantastic. A D deal. is not passing. Thank you. My D it's is not a D. I've it, been it, told it, my D is very nice. Percent. A six, uh, sixty-five percent is passing. Yeah, I bet you think that as well. Sixty-five. A sixty-five. Barely. A sixty-five is passing. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Um, congratulations! You now own the Green Bay Packers scooter. Congratulations. How much is the Green Bay Packers stock? It's Why did I do this? Three hundred dollars. I should have just not I mean, done the present. Can you get it? Can, what the heck? After you get your stock, can you get it signed by Jared Cook? Please. This was so dumb. Why did I even do? I'm not doing the presentation next time. What the heck? Well, in my problem, man. Let's move on. This is ridiculous. I thought um, the best part was the part where he said, "Don't read his book." So. I, I, to me, I thought that was worth a passing grade was because right? he saved me like two hours right? of life, even with chat. the Packers. And chat, the be my voice, on. chat. I Are they really going to make me buy a Packer? If you think I should have to buy a Packers stock, comment one right now in the comments. <laughs> if you don't comment two, let's, we got to take a poll. You just this got $100 basically saying how bad that was. This is egregious. <laughs> this is egregious. Back to the wheel of pain. Are you going to appeal? Chat, um, be my voice. But let's, I mean, Urban Meyer's leadership ability is the reason Jags fans are heading to the stadium this week We're dressed as clowns because they don't trust their owner. They don't trust the GM, the guys who put Urban Meyer in a place to be a leader. And uh, they have ruined the number one QB prospect thus far, and it doesn't look like that will get corrected anytime soon. And with Trim Baki there, coaches are guys saying something. no. They're saying, no, we're not going to go to Jags. We're not going to go there. So the, the, the chance that they're going to get a, a big-name head coach, not good. And now apparently the Bears with Ryan Pace are running into the same issue. If they don't fire Ryan Pace, they're going to lose out on the big name well, coaching. You knew that was going to happen. Uh, Nobody yeah. wants to work for Ryan yeah. Pace. Come on. Which yeah, is but, worse though? Dressing yeah, up yeah. like clowns and going to the stadium or wearing brown paper bags over your head at the stadium. I think it's the same thing. I mean, people dress up in like apparel all the time. People go as Darth Vader in Raiders games. People dress up in Steelers attire. You know, there was a dude who looked like he was at the Flava Flav watch and was like wearing like a, like a, like a, 
pull over I, and I mean that, it just happens. That's the way I know it's man. worse than both of that than either a bag on your head or dressing up as a clown is just being a Lions fan. That's that not showing up at all. Way worse. Just a normal, <laughs> just regular Lions fan wearing a old Barry Sanders jersey. All right. Or um, being an Antonio Brown fan. Imagine the people who are like, my favorite player is Antonio Brown. <laughs> you I just love horse. him. I love the way he throws furniture out of buildings. Speaking of Antonio Brown, thank you for the segue, Brandon. Uh, some more weirdness coming out of him today. He was officially cut. By the way, you're buying stock, Scooter. Uh, he was officially <laughs> cut by the uh, Tampa Bay uh, Gronkineers or whatever they're called. Um so now he's been released. Then he starts releasing. He starts releasing weird text messages between him and what's uh, Tom Brady's trainer name? Pedro Guerrero. Or Alex, Guerrero. Alex Guerrero. Yeah, Alex Guerrero. Yeah, Alex Guerrero. Um, oh, by the way, you didn't do that punishment, Brandon, about the TV twelve. What happened there? Yeah, you've you've put that mm -hmm. off this whole time. I thought we were yeah, going to get because a that wasn't a paid punishment. That was a oh, we decided to. Uh, oh yeah, I was because he wasn't here. Well, well, we'll save that for this. Also, summer. because it, uh, TV twelve's a fucking scam, and you can't make an appointment without a phone well, call to those people. Well, Ooh. hey, we I did thirty five minutes. This time. Two weeks thirty five minutes first. Hey, we did give it up for me. Today. We did pretty good today. You know, it always minutes. is going to be good, now, clean. Scooter's going to have to edit it and in post. Also, we learned that it cost $100,000 to train with Alex Guerrero. I can't imagine what You I know what you could have done with $100,000? What type of training are you doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. With a, oh. a lot of stretching. What oh, could yeah. you do with $100,000? How could you make $100,000? <laughs> Or well, DraftKings mm -hmm. Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app might be able to help you out there. And if I were to bet over at DraftKings, I don't know if they'll have this bet available this weekend, but I would want to see if Ben Roethlisberger could continue to throw for under 150 <laughs> yards and break the 50 attempt hey, mark. Hey, hey, that was brilliant <laughs> propaganda by the NFL. 2.7 yards per attempt, and they made him out like he was Kobe. Well, I oh mean, my hey, God, they maybe did. he and Kobe at least, you know, have something in common or allegedly have in common. So oh, that was a great day oh, for they went above the line for sure. It was a great day for Pittsburgh, and we don't care because we are ignorant and we love it, baby, because the Steelers. We are going to the Super Bowl. Jacksonville is going to pull off the BS, and the ref ball will be furious, and the Steelers are going to beat the Ravens, and then the Raiders and Chargers will tie. And we are out of the playoffs. All right. I'm, I'm up the end. Tree. <laughs> tree. We're in it. I've We're said right. this We're before. I already, I already said once if the Steelers go to the Super Bowl, Contracts I'll go to your house and let All you right. punch me through your screen door. That's right. They know what to use. How, how about this? If the Steelers go to the Super Bowl this year, I'll drive to your house. I'll come into that office, and I'll let you throw my head through the drywall behind there. Just straight <laughs> up. Just impact my head directly through the drywall. We, we just got demonetized for Don't certain. Why can't there. Daddy walk what? anymore? Well, <laughs> Steelers went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Steelers got the Super Bowl. What does that even mean? We don't I don't know, but it'll be good. It doesn't matter. It's a way of life. It's like every Yenzer philosopher. They just say and you can end every argument with Stellar's going to Super Bowl and that you automatically win. It's like uh, it's like yelling Jumanji or, you know, saying or no seven backsies. rings now. Is it seven rings now? Is that the equivalent? All right. Let's, let's rewind a little bit. I want to know what you get for $100,000 with this. Alex Guerrero guy. I think he, we finished it, right, partner? We didn't finish Draft it. DraftKings Sportsbook, yeah, we baby! Don't, 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 don't work clickbait. The, the, the best uh, sports we book the around. Description. Man, we use the code that. clickbait on DraftKings. Yeah, even so, yeah. Right, now. right now. Right now. Baker Mayfield's first, like, his comment about Mary Kay Cabot or Cabot or whatever her name oh, was. Oh, yeah, we got so much word, more stuff to clickbait. talk about. Clickbait. We have so much more to talk about. Yeah. Guys, what do we think about Antonio Brown? What do we think? I think I think we've all agreed on many times because this is this seems like the most deja vu deja vu it's of just, all it, is that every time Anto it, it's like rinse, repeat cycle. Every time repeat. he does something crazy, we all say he needs help. He gets in the good graces. He disappears. He's playing on a football field again. I think this is honestly the end. Like who resigns Antonio Brown? Somebody. But it was just insane the three page diatribe that his lawyer released that clearly. 
just like the book that you reported on, Scooter, was not written by the author. Okay. <laughs> no. Like everything was spelled correctly. Um, I, Antonio I, I Brown say that an... Antonio Brown is not educated or uneducated. I'm just saying the context and everything, the sentence structure was very strong for someone who I've heard his rap album, and I just don't <laughs> believe that Antonio Brown speaks that regardless of who wrote it. Writing. Like, oh. I feel like there are some things said in that lengthy response that I believe, like, I believe some things on Antonio Brown's side, and I believe some things on Bruce Arian's side. Like, I believe they're both telling the truth and both lying in some ways. I just don't know to what extent. Uh, there was something that came out and s- some players are saying, look, you can't get cut during a game. Certain things have to happen before you get actually cut. Mm -hmm. The coach can say whatever they want to say, but you're not actually cut until you see on the the waiver wire, you're cut. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of people not knowing like who to believe and what to believe. And I'm one of those people. I don't don't even know at this point. Mm -hmm. I know. I know everything to believe here. You know everything to believe? Brandon, what are your thoughts? I'll say it. I'll say it, Adam. Antonio Brown is dumb. He is a <laughs> dumb person. 100%. That's not a knock on him. It's he just dumb. I mean, he has and to We just called him dumb. When you're dumb, you can be taken advantage of in addition to making horrible decisions. And I Didn't think he like, post his like, things- bank account information? He po- yeah, they he posted his routing numbers in the text uh screen camp to Alex Guerrero asking for half of his hundred thousand dollars back. Antonio Brown, here's the like the only thing they have to figure out is whether or not he actually told the training staff of the Bucks during the game that he was having ankle problems. I don't think he did. If he told them during the game at some point, then that situation could have been handled. Yeah, it was a grievous. Better. But the Bucks knew he had an ankle injury leading into that. He'd been dealing with it all the way back to uh, to October. And I think it was Tom Pelissero on the NFL Network said that even what Antonio Brown's MRI, his individual MRI confirmed is stuff they already knew about his ankle back then, that it had bone spurs and that there was a a sprain in it, which is the torn ligaments. So the ankle injury, that was real. Antonio Brown being able to play on it was the issue. But the real issue behind all of that is earlier in the week, him and his agent asked the Bucks to guarantee his incentives. Mm -hmm. They said no. So they probably knew that there was a chance AB wasn't going to hit those incentives because of his injury. And instead of playing through the game, he AB went nuclear. Went. And well, he flipped out he over not He made a ball. show of it when he left, which is why it became such a big story. If he just walked into the, the tunnel, said, hey, I had an injury. I had to go to the locker room. We probably would be more inclined to be on Antonio Brown's side. But since he did what AB always does, the immediate reaction is like, oh, no, he's doing it again. Then we get some more information from Antonio Brown's camp. We're like, oh, well, maybe maybe the Bucks screwed him over. And then Bruce Arians comes out and says, no, he's lying to you all again. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that makes sense for Antonio Brown. And you're right, Scooter. Maybe there's some truth from AB's side in there. Maybe there's some lying on the, the Bucks side because they could be in trouble if they do mishandle an injury. I'm not saying they're above that, but it's about money. AB got screwed out of it, and he reacted poorly in the situation because – Is it part of him not hitting those incentives because he missed three games for faking a vaccine card? No, <laughs> he was still <laughs> injured for – Accountability when it comes to Antonio Brown. I'm not saying, you like, read Urban Antonio Meyer. Brown is not – without fault in the situation. I'm just saying there is a chance that people are using his past situations against him to gaslight him and to gaslight us into not believing anything he says that might be truthful. That's basically yeah. The, well he'll be hard to be- it'll be hard to believe him ever again on any anything. Unless yeah, he says like, is booming, then maybe that could be true. It's just like, what do you do when someone who might have some problems is saying some things? And we're we're seeing. We are seeing what one organization is doing right now. And 
it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I, I, I just don't see how Bruce Arians makes it this far in life by coddling anyone, by coddling an absolute a grown man. So I'm kind of on team Arians. Like, dude, I don't care. I don't need – like, he actually – But did you see – did you see, like, what Des posted? Des Bryant came out and had a post uh, defending Antonio Brown because it's like if you're uh, an athlete, there are stories like this – all the time, That's but true. confirmed where the athletes got screwed over, where the coach said they were going to do something and they never did it when the coach promised and they never delivered. So it's like to athletes, this stuff is happening. It happens all the time. So that's why for some people they're giving Antonio Brown a pass, despite knowing his long list of nonsense that he's done, because this stuff does happen and you don't hear about it. It's just business as usual. So that's why I think it's happening someone high up, high profile. And it's so interesting because it's one of the first times we're actually able to see something like this in the limelight. Basically, well, yeah, but it's... Antonio Brown needs a teammate to come out and say he heard Antonio Brown tell the trainers during the game he couldn't play because of his ankle. Because if nobody's going to confirm that, then we're probably going to believe what Bruce Arians is saying in that he was pissed off at halftime. This was an issue bef before the third quarter even started because he wasn't getting targets. And they had to calm him down at halftime. And then this yeah, happened. And the whole yeah. thing is conflated I, by when, when you're asking what's the problem and you're saying, I'm not getting targets. Well, are, is that the problem or is it your ankle? Which is it? Yeah. So it's, He's wow. lucky his ankle is injured. Otherwise, he would have no case here. And the thing is, is like if, if this goes to a court of law, the the – the Buccaneers' first exhibit A is him jumping around and waving his arms up. It's like what those films where they uh, they find people on disability, like working in their backyard and pouring cement. That's Anto Antonio Brown with his ankle running around the field in his. Yeah, but I mean, that's you can get shot up. You can get uh, hurt it's ankle shot right? up with Toradol, and then now yeah. you can do that same thing. I, so, I yeah. feel for, I I agree with him on that because a lot of ex NFL players, Uche and Justin, they talk about Toradol, and they just uh, yeah. they inject like, you with maybe. that, and you're a different person. And I don't I know take what it that just does to see to how good life. I feel. Yes, <laughs> give me Toradol right in my belly. I thought you were going to say butt. And I'm going to do the hot dog uh, eating challenge. And all right. So we've we've talked about it. Wow. Another. Whoa. Whoa. Damn. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Jesus. Blossom. I have a question. Damn for great. Somebody give money to somebody else, please. Punish I a, tree. I, I, don't, I don't think question. Antonio Brown's going to get picked up by any other team. Because Ooh, that should be a punishment is injury. an Antonio Brown cameo. Agreed. Yep. No, they're too heard expensive. You called me a deal. It's three hundred bucks. Yep, it's five hundred for individual use. If you want to use it for your business or uh, in another video, it's three grand right now. Holy three grand? Wow. Yeah, no. Okay, no, no, that's unfair. And technically, we could probably just pay for the individual use, but uh, I could see there. I could see his lawyer All coming right. after us. All right, I'm totally you want to get. You want business to be booming for real, pay for the individual one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then we get sued by Antonio Brown. That would boom business. So big time that would be a, a real clickbait uh, yes. episode. They get, I would just Here's, edit it out post and just be like, okay. Yeah. I have a lawsuit? question for everyone from this thing. Okay. Because he brought up paying Alex Guerrero a hundred thousand dollars to do, you know, the Tom Brady training method, whatever it is, is recovery, whatever. And athletes do that. They go outside the team to get treatment, to do different things because teams don't provide the best services. Not every, every organization is different. Teams don't provide the best services. I agree. That's why they do it. So it makes sense to pay somebody outside of that. But is it weird to any of you guys that he's paying Tom Brady's business partner $100,000 for body work that Tom Brady theoretically is profiting off his own teammates getting recovery through his company. 
to are me, that seems like a really that... weird thing about this situation. Well, uh, are you saying will, that uh, Tom Brady has a multi-level marketing scheme going on with his teammates? I mean, I have supplements in my garage. Accept... She says I mean, so I wait, 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 wait a minute. So when I go into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers locker room, Tom Brady's there, and he's like, listen, you buy toilet paper, right? And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, wouldn't you be better off if you bought it from me? And I'm just like, how does this – whole tb12 method work tom what are what are confederated products uh listen if i'm paying somebody a hundred thousand dollars for body work i better be at the tip top shape i better you better be giving me whatever um makes you look like you're still 26 tom um, oh okay i thought that was going a different way oh um I, I I need to know whether talking about uh, me or Tom Brady. I didn't and it mean, seems I like Alex know. seemed to be very willing to get. And apparently, Tom, uh, Antonio Brown doesn't pay people, so uh, whatever they were selling must have been worth it for Antonio Brown, a notorious cheapskate who has stiffed many people in his life. Probably that poor doctor who he farted on. Oh, yeah. um, that was bizarre. Funny. So that was bizarre. And that's yeah. the only way I'll accept the TB12 if it, he repeatedly farts on Alex Guerrero. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's weird. It, that is it, weird. It stinks to high heaven for lack of a better. Like, what would happen? You know, two parts. teammates start a business, a joint business together, business fails. Now the teammates are at odds. Ooh, maybe that's what it, what uh antonio was brown was mad about because he gave him a hundred thousand dollars to buy crypto and crypto is taking a dive right now and he's like i need to get away from tom i need to get away and he's, he's all laughing because gronk hadn't been hit with this gronk hadn't been hit with this okay next topic we're rounding out the show aaron Rodgers called a reporter a bum <laughs> I have well, I mean, the him. guy who's I, – I forget his name. Now, he tried to bring personal character. Completely into warranted, by the way. Tom, give us your thoughts <laughs> on this. Give it, Run down the situation and then give us your thoughts on what you th – and on how you we think – got to follow reacted. this up, and we have to follow this up with a discussion gotta, I'll be right about back. the NFL MVP vote. About that one dude who said he wasn't voting for Aaron Rodgers. Oh, Mark Cush, I think his name is. So we can talk about that after also. Okay. So well, to explain for people who don't know, we talked about this on GPS a bit. So the NFL does their MVP voting weird. Like they don't do it like other leagues because in other leagues you have ranked voting in which like oh, you're like, all right, top like thing. one, two, three people, like what have you. But here you have 50 people who are, who are reporters who vote for the MVP and you only have one vote. So one of those, so because of that, it could be like a landslide. That's why Russell Wilson is like never gotten a vote, like et cetera. So what happened was there was a reporter who is a Bears beat writer. That's very important to this story. Who basically went on a podcast and said that there was like, he was not going to vote for Aaron Rodgers. He was the biggest jerk in the league. And the thing that was worse was that he said this, that even before the season, had begun, he made up his mind that he wasn't going to vote for Aaron Rodgers, the MVP, regardless. And he even admitted, he's like, could you make the argument that he was the best player on the field? Sure, you could. But he said that he held the Packers fans hostage. He did such damage to the team. Like, and this was all like before even the COVID stuff and the vaccine stuff. Like it was before all of it. That he basically came out and said that he wasn't going to do it because of off-field issues. That he wasn't going to vote for him. And so this has like launched nuclear and it got worse because he came out with a quote unquote apology yesterday that he made thankfully free to all of his readers that he <laughs> made. And he basically just doubled down and then started blaming cancel culture and was like, there's a bunch of radio hosts and personalities that are trying to get my vote taken away. And he was more complaining about that than anything. And he said he stood by his comments. And so this has led to Aaron Rodgers being asked about it. And he said that he was a bum, that he has no idea who he is. And like, he, no one knows he doesn't know him. He and doesn't then, know me. And like Rodgers said, he's like, he never came down, sat down for lunch with me. Like he doesn't know who I am. And the best part about it, and I got to give props to Aaron Rodgers on this. He's like, you, you wanted to add another initial to MVP, meaning MVVP, like most vaccinated valuable player. And I was like, you know what? That's a fun play on words. So, it is now called into question that should this guy even be voting? There's bias that has nothing to do with the football field. 
Like, it's literally like he's a jerk, so I don't want to vote for him. And honestly, like, yes, he did write that Haha Clinton Dix was better than Adrian Amos. That worked out well. But the bigger thing is, is that now they're like, okay, what do we do? Do we strip his vote? Two, like Matt LaFleur was asked about this, the head coach of the Packers. And he's like, if like you, of course, just base it on the field of work that they've done on the field, because that's what the MVP award is all about. So yeah, it's, it's a nightmare right now, but like people's confidence in the MVP voting is like to crap because like yeah, you know, he's the one bad actor. actor. Yeah. And to be completely honest, like in that case, that in, in his specific scenario, then Tom Brady shouldn't get an MVP vote either because he brought Antonio Brown into the Buccaneers. Like, if we want to be that petty and, like, start looking at off-field stuff, like, that's what we're doing. But, like, the MVP vote should be for what's done on the field. In it's my so opinion. interesting I- because, uh, in this case, it's just because uh, he, he thinks this guy's a jerk, right? But... What if it's not his vaccination status? What if this guy goes out in the playoffs, uh, wild card weekend, here they're off, and he gets a DUI, kills someone? Same question. Still MVP or no? So I think it speaks to a larger issue, like should off-the-field stuff ever come into play? And my answer is yes, I don't want the DUI guy winning MVP. You get a DUI and kill someone, you don't get an MVP vote. Now, vaccination status, that's different, right? I mean, Ray Lewis. So it's like, Harrison. it's a bigger question. It's should Tom Brady, Tom Brady, yeah, he's anything an other than yeah. gameplay ever well, affect a vote? Well, let's be completely honest here, right? This guy could have had all those feelings and beliefs and is like, listen, regardless of what happens this year, I'm not voting for Aaron Rodgers. And if he just didn't say anything, no one would know. I am exactly. sure there's plenty of people because they brought this up on McAfee's show. McAfee flat out told Rod, he's like, you know, you're never getting MVP again, right? Because the reporters, like, they vote for it. And he's like, that's a possibility. Like, that could be a thing that's going to happen. And if he didn't say a word, then, like, this would be a nothing. Yeah. Like, oh, reporters, exactly. of course, Nobody they're going to have saying. bias. There's going to be bias everywhere, right? Baseball Hall of Fame, dude. Nothing but biases. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the stories. Baseball Hall of Fame, isn't it? Like, uh, like, uh, like kinda... sports journalists are some of the most entitled people that you could probably come across, especially yeah, when it comes especially to Especially guys that talk about sports. I know, right? I mean, YouTube especially channels. YouTubers. Jeez, what like, a we have bunch the pompous attitude to believe that our opinions matter? Really? Come on. You're exactly right, Tom. This man wanted this. He wanted to be put in the limelight because why else would you come out and say this? It's just like, yeah, you're doing this for a reason. He wanted wanted people to know that you don't like Aaron Rodgers. Okay, we know now. Now there are going to be certain consequences. There's consequences. Like so, that's it's it's funny to me. That's not cancel culture. Being accountable for your actions is not cancel culture. It's being accountable for your actions. Which you said something. Now we'll see what results from that. It's just as simple wow. as that. Spoken just like Urban Meyer or whoever his ghostwriter was. Is that like okay. the, the irony Run in, in this? Problems. Run towards your problems aggressively and then that. solve them. Because like oh. Rogers complains about cancel culture, like he's been doing it like with the whole vaccinate thing. And I just think it's very ironic that he's also like this reporter is also complaining about cancel culture and like. They're, they're fine. Well, cancel so, culture like the worst person game, you know. Right? Half the time people say cancel culture, they're just referring to people being held accountable for their actions. Yes. All I'm right. Excited. Let's round out the show before we get to the countdown. Playoff scenarios are happening this weekend. We've we've since the last two weeks, we've lost the Thursday night game. So oh, God, basically it Man, comes the down to the Colts, the Colts, the Colts, the Chargers, and the Raiders. Stillers, somehow Stillers, theoretically, and right. and so yeah. are the Ravens. Now, if the, Jags the Colts are gonna beat win the and Jags, then the Steelers are going to win, and then the Steelers are, you know, the Rams. If the Colts beat the Jags, the Chargers and Raiders could tie and both get in, which I've been added about eighty-six times. Go Chargers, go! Uh, that they would just start kneeling. And uh, end in a tie. Now, to me, what is going to create the tie happening is the fact that they're going to go out and try to kill each other for that last spot. And that will end up in a 2020 tie, Ooh. which would just be the perfect. Actually, if it was 2022, 20, 
22 to 22. 22. As the time and the last score was a safety to make it 24, that would be perfect. But I'm telling you, that's going to end up creating the tie. Now, if you had a team that if they could tie their rival, their division rival, and get in, would you accept that as a fan? That happened in a World Cup uh, qualifier. Yeah. That is different, okay? In, world, in but, soccer, it is totally acceptable to just go out there and suck. And be I and would tie with the Eagles. 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 Collusion I would tie with the Eagles qualifier. last game of the week if it guaranteed us getting in. I don't care if you get in, we'll see you in the playoffs. I just want to get in. But you have the chance to bounce them by simply beating them. Well, that's the problem. That's like, the Cowboys scenario. fan doesn't have faith in their own team. Like not we really, really don't. So because Towards the playoffs, that. all faith is lost. We're just You're hoping great. and we're praying uh -huh. now. Okay. It's not the same. Listen, we're not coming from a Packers background where we have success and our quarterback <laughs> is hated and not voted for on because MVP. you were successful we don't have we're in the nineties. Get some of these champagne problems. We don't have that. Um, oh my God. so many Super Bowl titles. Right. <laughs> but oh my gosh. I do want to talk about QBs, too many though, MVP. before we get out of here. We got a okay. couple minutes. Oh, I want to yeah. talk about Baker Mayfield. Oh yeah. And get your guys' take for MVP. Yeah, Baker Mayfield. You're a Browns fan. Guys, if you're a Browns fan in the chat right now, let me know what you think of Baker Mayfield. Should they resign him or not? Because this is going to be very interesting what the Browns do. I don't know. Have Half Browns options, fans, though, they'll probably it's keep like him around. Every Browns fan online hates this dude, but like three weeks ago, they were loving this dude. So where are you at now, Browns fans? I think Browns fans have gotten, let's go by this analogy, either smooth peanut butter or crunchy peanut butter. Browns fans are crunchy peanut butter on Baker Mayfield. They are not liking him at all. I think crunchy peanut butter is good. I'm a smooth peanut butter guy. I like, I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, smooth, but crunchy as, as a fan whoa, of the division rival, I hope they re sign Baker Mayfield for the next 15 years. I would chat. appreciate that. Hold on, chat. Are you crunchy or are you smooth down there? Give I'm me, uh, and this is not a manscape commercial. Give me, uh, well, it depends. It depends on how you feel. If you want to go down there and you want to want crunchy, you'll get crunchy. If you want smooth, you'll get smooth. I am horrified. It's peanut butter. I'm, yeah, I'm just saying. Anyways, who the hell put smooth? My bad, that was I'm me. Smooth. I thought I'm it was smooth. only my wow, smooth. Wow, dude, I'm how smooth. dare you for me on peanut just butter? Saying. It just went to. You go with chunky. You go with crunchy peanut butter, bro. Chunky. Okay. You look hey, crunchy peanut butter is pretty good, I'll man. Eat it. I mean, the peanut is actually. I'll You're all pretty good in that. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh oh. All right. Um, I, I, I will say this. I like it when athletes clap back at reporters. I just love it because for so long, people have just criticized and dumped on athletes and they haven't, uh, had a real platform to go back at people They usually, you know, they're expected to just kind of take it, which is fine. You know, like I, I can respect that as well, being silent and just being like, you don't mean anything to me, but I also find it funny if it's done well, when you, uh, tell someone that they're trash. And the Chargers go. Baker John. has been uh, clapping back at some people uh, for you guys on Twitter. If you'd like to go check out some of those. Ooh. All right. Is it time for the countdown, boys? To add also, the Saints or 49ers could get in for the playoffs. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the, those teams in the NFC. We'll, we'll know by next week. And we'll, we'll, I think we should do official predictions next week. Isn't that it weird yeah. that the Cowboys can play the Eagles two weeks in a row? I think that's weird. I feel like that happens every single year. Like it's there's so a divisional weird. matchup again, yeah. like it's back to back. Like the Giants, Rams. Yeah, it's weird. they did that last year. It should right? not be allowed. Yeah, the Giants did that one year. They had to play the Eagles on the last game of the season, and then they played them in the first round of the playoffs. We've done happened. that with the Vikings. That was a long time ago. I think it was like you know years. I don't even Eagles remember. Eagles are about to go two and zero against the Cowboys to close out the season. Mm -hmm. And oh, what? Wait, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Countdown. Are we doing? Yes, we're doing the countdown. So everyone get your super chats in to tip the balance of punishment towards tree. Or, <laughs> oh, God. No. All right. Yeah, I, I, I give somebody a five hundo so I don't get ready to start. A couple five hundo. Tom, I want I want to hear you. Give donuts to Tom. Donuts to five. No, Nobody's punished five in like 
Come on, I know. It's so funny when he's just like you're not at risk. He has to man about being his own punishment. He's one of the best feelings in life, right? I'm not at risk. I'm not at risk. I'm not at risk. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. My book report was a C minus. It was not. It was a D. My book report was a C minus. C minus. It was. It was a D minus. It was probably like a D. Yeah. It was D. Yeah. It was bad. Maybe a D plus. All right. I got ninety eight dollars. I'm in the clear. Boo. Pretty good. I got a buck seventy one. Thank you guys for the supers. Very nice. Okay. Uh, I got a two hundo. <laughs> that came after, by the way. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's not the time of the read. It's the time of the read. That's what I was. I mean, it's like, it's live. It's like it's like, like, it's, uh, right. it's like seven 30, seconds on yep. YouTube. Thirty so second is the thirty second warning. It's like the two minute warning. Yep. What so action after? We're including like, that? that? Yes. That, yep. that you has been. You better get your read in. earlier this year. It's until you read your yes. number. You better get your buzzer beater in. All right. Well, let me read this. I'm at six hundred twenty six. Yes. Yes. Tree. Let's go. Oh, a tree Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm five hundred twenty eight dollars and ninety six cents. Five twenty eight ninety six. I didn't lose. Screw you, scooter. I'm winning. <laughs> Don't don't screw me. Why I gotta get screwed? No, no. Screw this man right here. Oh no! What does tree have? <laughs> this man. It's like a thousand. Say it again. Nine seventy six. Nine seventy six. I hate you all. I, hate I appreciate you. that two hundred. <laughs> Crucial. Let's go. <laughs> hey, anytime you guys want to <laughs> send money <laughs> late, let, yeah, just send it over. I, I want. It. I want to see Tree and a clown get up the entire show next week. Wait, I wait, want wait. face paint though for nine seventy six with, with real crazy. face paint, like the exact replication of the clown thing. From did he paint his toenails yet and fingernails with the that. fake mustache? With the he did, he did the toenails with the fake mustache and everything, or actually just keep like your it. real mustache. And, well, I'm, I'll probably have to shave this off for it, and then just keep yep. the mustache. Are we going with clown? Outfit, absolutely. Yeah, like I we need the clown. outfit too. The outfit and the face paint. And take a couple yeah, of photos so yeah, that sure. someone can make an album cover with you and Antonio Brown too. Take a couple oh, photos. Is, I I hate clowns, and I'm willing George. to get through this experience because I want to laugh die, at tree. When uh, you look back at me anyway, asshole. Was this our first clickbait of 2022? Yes, yes. it yes. was. Here's a well, question. Scooter and I right? both coming off of COVID, by the way. Everyone, please be safe. Yeah. Out there. We uh be safe. Uh it's out there. Be safe. That's when I go yeah. to dinner, I wear a condom. Oh, I have to say. And uh <laughs> you wear a life-size condom. Yes. Uh doing. so are we all in agreement? Here? Me. I got a condom on. <laughs> yep. COVID ain't gonna get me. Right. Uh, we're we're question, condom on all day. Question for the group. Did everybody send tree? His present? I did. Have you gotten your gift yet, Tree? I think I gotten one. I, oh, a couple I sent other mine last I, week. I sent mine easily. So I think next week when you get them all, you'll have to display them on the show as well in your clown outfit. So mm -hmm. after this, go on and order your clown outfit and your clown makeup so you're ready for next week. And uh, be ready. Sad be ready. clown opens gifts. Yes. And uh, I got it. 2022. Everyone, we made it. We're here. Clickbait 2022. We hope you guys have a great year this year. And let's get it. Let's go. Clickbait sports. DraftKings.com. I'm Tom. Clickbait. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Click the bell.